Hey everybody, in this lesson we're going to talk about how do we name and write the formula of covalent compounds. To get started though, we need to know how we read certain prefixes, we call it. And what a prefix is in the name sense is it tells you how many of each covalent chemicals we have. So what do we have? Well, we have, if it's one covalent chemical, we put mono. 2 is di, 3 is tri, 4 is tetra, like a tetrahedron, right? 5 is penta, 6 is hexa, like a hexagon, 7 is hepta, 8 is octa, 9 is nona, and 10 is deca. Now, now the fun fact, though, you might go, hmm, oct, no, dec, isn't that months? But why is October the 10th month, November the 11th month, and December the 12th month? And it has to do with with the calendar we deal with nowadays, we actually had to add two months into it. So what they added was July and August. And you could say that those two months are named after Julius Caesar and Augustus. The one is the first Roman Empire's emperor, and the second one was the person who, just, who really put the Roman Empire together. So that's a little fun fact. So we have these prefixes that tell us the number of each element. So how do we write the chemical formulas of the covalent compounds? Well, what we do is we look at prefix for our number. And the big thing is, again, ones are assumed. So let's try it out. But we actually have one more rule, which is that if first element has no prefix, it is one, which is mono. We don't put mono for the first element, but we will say it's one. So let's practice this out. Dinitrogen trioxide. Hmm, nitrogen oxygen. That means we have N and we have O. But what do we have? Di, dinitrogen is two. Trioxide is three. So this chemical formula becomes N2O3. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur has no prefix. Ah, it's the first element, which means it should be one. We don't need to put monosulfur. Instead, we just save that mono word and we say it's S1. Don't want to write ones though. Hexafluoride. That means how many fluorines? Six. So this one becomes SF6. Another fun fact, sulfur hexafluoride is the opposite of helium. So what that means is when you in breathe in helium, it makes your vocal cord higher due to being less dense than air. Sulfur hexafluoride is much more dense than air, so if you suck that in, your voice goes deep. So if you want to check it out, go check out some YouTube videos about sulfur hexafluoride. So what if we go backwards? How do we write the names of covalent compounds? Well, to write the names, what you do is you use prefix to state number. But what we do is we also want to make sure that the first element, if it's one, do not write a prefix. So we do not need mono. We already assume it's one. But for the second element, it ends in I still. So the IDE rule still applies. So let's practice this. If we look at CO2, we see that CO2, C, there's only one of them because there's nothing else. So we don't need to write monocarbon. We just write carbon. We see O, oxygen. We see two of them, so that becomes di, and oxygen becomes oxide still. Hence why it becomes carbon dioxide. If you look at our next example, P2O3, P is phosphorus. There's two of them, so we do need a prefix now. It becomes di, phosphorus, and then again, this one's O3, 
reactions, trioxide. So this is how we write the chemical names and formulas of covalent compounds. As always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy. I'll see you soon.